Hi, I'm Sabine, the Purpose Lawyer. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast. It really goes a long way. It helps us spread the good word. And if you or anybody you know is in the market for legacy or estate planning or business or trademarks, please reach out to our firm. It's the Ambitious Legacy Firm. We are licensed in New York and New Jersey, but we have service partners in all states. So we'd love to work with you. Um, asset protection, legacy planning, trademarks, we got you. All right. So it's the Ambitious Legacy Firm. Dot com. Now let's get Welcome into another episode. episode of the Ambitious Legacy Podcast. I'm your host, Sabine, the Purpose Lawyer. Thank you for listening and thank you for helping me be on purpose. So today, after having this conversation uh, with my guests, I was thinking about, you know, my journey and how I sort of, you know, got here to where I am <laughs> today. And it had me thinking, you know, about the different parts of my journey and how to me, it seemed like I failed at a lot of things, right? So when I first started out my practice, I've been in practice for, uh, I could say about 10 years now. And I first started out my practice, I was, you know, practicing matrimonial law and I was like helping people get divorced. And I felt like I was part of every divorce and it was like so much drama. Um, and I had this one client that I just had a, like a really bad experience with. And I was just like, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. But to me, it felt like a failure. It felt like, you know, I couldn't, you know, cut it as a, a matrimonial and family lawyer. But then I started to give myself some grace and said, okay, let me, you know, shift my attention and do something else within my same business. So I uh, went hard on the real estate transactions because I, I did a few of them, but um, I wasn't really like, you know, focused on that. So I started vamping it up. I, I focused my attention on it and I built a pretty sizable um, book of business. And then I just realized that the way that this business is run, you know, to have a, a large volume of it wasn't feeding my soul and it wasn't feeding what I wanted to do with my, with my life. So I decided to sort of scale that back a bit. But again, I was like, wow, like I, it felt like a failure. Like I didn't quite cut it with that. And so then, um, you know, along along the way, I was always working with business owners and things like that. Um, but I wasn't sure that I really wanted to sort of like have that as my main thing, you know, only. And so I kind of felt like I didn't really, you know, make it in that in that particular area. And so all of these little things felt like failures. But then what I realized now that my firm focuses mostly on asset protection and trust in estates and helping individuals and business owners build their legacies I realized that all these things that I did and became skilled in and knowledgeable in are part of what I do today, right? So a lot of people who we deal with, most of the people who we help own real estate or they have businesses or, you know, they, they've had a divorce or want to have questions about that type of thing and relationships and how all of this works together. And so we're knowledgeable on these things, right? Because of the walk. But I didn't see this along the way, right? I didn't know I was painting a picture, I was picking up skills here and there to sort of be equipped to do what I'm doing. So life is so interesting that way. So my guest today um, had an interesting story. He really did a lot of things in a short period of time and failed pretty quickly at them. But um, what's interesting is that, you know, he really found a way to sort of become successful quickly as well as a result of moving through those losses. And I'm kind of jealous <laughs> of him being able to, you know, move and shake, uh, learning really fastly that, you know, this thing's not going to work. This is not going to work. So he didn't waste his time. Um, he's young and he's smart. And he also gave us tons of great tips on credit that, you know, things that I hadn't really um, learned before. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, certainly stay tuned for the conversation. Let's get talking to Mr. Marvin Francois. Welcome, Marvin. Marvin Francois. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Most definitely. Yeah. So those of you who don't know Mr. Marvin Francois, he is a credit guru. He's mm -hmm. a YouTube sensational. And he's so much more, right? Which we're going to get into. <laughs> I, I guess I am. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but once again, thank you for having me. I'm excited to get into it. Of course. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's yeah, do it. Let's it's do definitely going to be fun. You guys will see. Don't 
worry. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So how does someone, you're fairly young, right? right? You've, um, you have so much knowledge with credit and, and, and other things. Right, right, right. And um, you've built your, your YouTube channel to mm-hmm. like be pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. How did you get to where you are? Wow. That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> that's a, okay. So how, you want a long story short or short story long? You want to give it a full? I want the most colorful story. Okay, let's go. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So um, this st- this goes all the way back to late 2019, early 2020, right? Okay. So early 2020, um, I uh, I was going into my third year of stand-up comedy, right? Mm. So a lot of people don't know this. Before I was in the financial literacy space that I'm in now, right. I was actually doing stand-up, right? Doing it for three years. And I was doing fairly well for myself. I okay. was... Um, I had made some waves in, within the space. I had, you know, toured across the country, stuff like that. But Well, you can't just gloss over that. <laughs> I was doing a little something, something. I was doing a little something, something. Nothing too crazy, nothing okay. too little. I was, I was, I was on an incline. Right. I was on okay. an incline. So, okay. But I was, I was doing well for myself. Mm-hmm. But then going into 2020, you know, um, as you know, the pandemic came. Yeah. So, you know, stand-up comedy is an outside thing. You're moving around. You're going from comedy club to comedy club, all these different things. Mm-hmm. Um, but the pandemic kind of slowed things down for me, right? Okay. And it forced me to kind of stay in the crib. Uh, for the first time in a long time, because up until that point in my career, I was just always on the move, always on the go. Because, you know, okay. when you're in the entertainment industry, you, there's really no, you don't really stop. You just right. got to keep it's going now. as much as possible. It's a <laughs> momentum kind of thing where you're making mm-hmm. as much connections as you possibly can, doing as many shows as you can, shaking as many hands, all those uh, amazing things. Mm-hmm. Pandemic came. That was really the first time I really got a chance to just stop, sit and just think. You know, when right. you're young and you're on the go and you're trying to chase this dream or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. you really don't, you really don't stop and think about things you just go 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 you know your head is down you just Mm -hmm. you're just pushing forward but that was the first time i really got a chance to do that and i really just started asking myself a lot myself excuse me a lot of uncomfortable questions mainly because Mm -hmm. around that time my dad had caught covid oh wow! yeah so he caught covid and that was like my first time like my dad is like a a blue collar guy like from birth until now like wake up eight o'clock every day he's out it out you know busting his behind working his tail Mm -hmm. off coming in that was my first time seeing him bedridden for like a week, two weeks because wow. of COVID. Mm-hmm. So that, along with me just being stuck in the house and, you know, taking care of him and all these all this crazy stuff going on because of the pandemic made mm-hmm. me just ask a lot of questions. And it really made me look at my comedy career a little bit differently because although I was having what I thought was a lot of success, mm-hmm. financially it wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't clicking. <laughs> it's a struggle in the beginning. It was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. <laughs> right. So at the time, I'm like, you know, I love comedy. I'm good at it. I think I have a really high ceiling. Mm-hmm. But I kind of had to have a harsh conversation with myself of like, yo, God forbid, you mm-hmm. know, because my dad was a little bit older. And as you know, with COVID, you know, it was favoring, not favoring, but if you were older or you had some breathing problems, mm-hmm. you know, you were on the unlikely side. Yes, to... yes, yes. So I was, you know, it was just a lot going on. Yeah, it was very stressful. So in my mind, mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, God forbid something happens to my pops today. I'm the first son of a family. Mm-hmm. Can I take care of my family through just stand up? Mm-hmm. And when I realized that the answer to that question was no, I was like, OK, I got to pivot. Yeah. And then all of 2020, I was just bouncing around a lot. Right. Okay. Bouncing around like, you know, people see credit. But in between there, I, w- I did everything like I was oh, really? selling shirts on Shopify that okay. failed. Okay. I-, I tried to get into real estate with like wholesaling. Terrible. Terrible. It <laughs> wasn't your thing. Not at all. No, no, no. Very bad. Don't don't do it. Please don't do it. It's very bad. Wait, what's, the, what's the worst thing about it? Um, the phone calls and people constantly hanging up in your face. Yeah. Cause at the time I, I haven't, it. yeah, I didn't, I, I mean, I'm not sure how heavy you been into the, the real estate space, but I know a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like, I didn't, I didn't have enough money to like buy somebody to cold call for me. Yes, so I had to do it myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People don't say nice things when you ask them to buy their house. They don't, <laughs> they're not, they're not too happy about that. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of cursing, a lot of words I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. That wasn't it. <laughs> I tried. I did. When I tell you I did everything, I like at the time I was dating a girl. We mm-hmm. tried to like start like a hand soap company uh, like okay. that. That I'm everything. <laughs> everything. I love that you failed quickly. And oh, you yeah. were just like, you know. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Which isn't in hindsight ain't really the best thing. You really want to give things a little bit of a longer chance. But for me, I was just mm-hmm. up until that point in my life, everything that I had done that I knew was for me kind of just had success early on. So I stuck okay. with it. Like okay. with comedy. It ha- I had success with it early on, so it just made sense with me to stick to it. Right. So once I stopped doing comedy and tried to transition, I'm like, okay, anything else that I do afterwards, I'm thinking it has to have the same effect to I it. I understand. So yeah. real estate. But re- just to just to speak to that, right? You were you were also listening to yourself, and you yeah. were like in a space where you were trying to f- figure things out. 100%. So you know what that feeling is. If yeah, this yeah. is not it, then right. this is not it. Hundred percent. You gotta want it to be able to grind through those hard times, uh, right? A hundred percent. hundred percent. And I did not want real estate wholesaling. <laughs> I did not want to sell soap on Shopify right. or shirts, all these different things. I I'm just bouncing around, right? Okay. Couldn't figure nothing out. Now 
I, at the time, I just started building up my own personal credit. Okay. So I was the only person within my circle of friends and just amongst my peers that really started to ingratiate myself and do the research on credit because I'm, you know, I'm building my own up. I got to figure this thing out. Right. And I was really enamored by it. Mm -hmm. So every little thing under the sun that I learned about personal credit from building it and all these other different things, I would run and go tell all my homies. I would run and tell my girl at the time. I would run and tell every, any and everybody under the sun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm at the time I was, I'm 24 and I was like 22, 23 around the time. Okay. They ain't care, right? Because most young people just they don't. We don't like, we, we, okay, bro. Yeah, it's like I'm like, yo, did you know that if you do this with this, it's like I'm, I'm trying to like Madden right now. You bothering me? Get on my, my face. Vibe. Yeah, you kill my vibe. What you talk about? You understand? So, but I just kept. I just as while I'm looking around trying to find my thing, mm -hmm. I'm learning more about credit, and I fall. I'm falling in love with it. Then I started learning a little bit about credit repair. Okay. And then when I started learning a little bit about credit repair, I started like, it, I learned this little trick on how to like remove inquiries quick. And I started doing it for like, I did it for my girl. I did it for, um, you know, a couple of my friends, all these different things. Mm -hmm. And then at the time, my girl at the time, she was just like, hey, you, this seems like something you really, really into. You should really kind mm -hmm. of try and figure out, you know, your footing in all of this. Okay. Coincidentally enough, around that time, a dude who I was following, uh, Herman Dulce, shout out to Haitian CEO. That's my guy. Right. Yeah, he, <laughs> he uh, coincidentally at the time, now, by now, this is, we're talking about like early fall. So September, okay. October-ish. Okay. Right. He has a credit repair class that he comes out with. Mm. Has a credit repair class that he comes out with. And, um, you know, um, I'm like, okay, I got to go. Because mm -hmm. I'm clearly, I'm super duper into this. Like, it's almost like the stars are aligning. Like, I'm super duper into this. I don't think it's by coincidence that mm -hmm. this class just pops up and it's connected to someone I know. Let's go out to this thing, right? Mm -hmm. It was like fifteen hundred dollars at the time. Okay. Didn't have that Which, money. Yeah, I was gonna didn't, say. Didn't have that money. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't have that money. Mm -hmm. So I, I reached out to a friend or two, told him what my plan was. I was like, look, I think this might be it for me. Mm -hmm. Like, just let me a couple dollars. Let me figure this thing out. I promise you, before the end of the year, if this is what I think it's gonna be, I will get you your money back. Right. right? right. I borrowed money from like two, three different people. Mm -hmm. Went out to the class, and that was what ultimately like kind of flip the switch for me to like kind of just go all in on this credit space. Wow. Well, yeah. that's a, that really speaks to who you are as a person yeah, that yeah. you got three people willing to invest that kind of money in you. Right, right, right. Future. Three out of like 50 because I asked a couple <laughs> other people and it was like, you get off my phone. You know, go away. <laughs> but shout out to them. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. But went to the class and it just flipped the switch for me. Not because the information was cool, mm -hmm. but that was really my first time being in a space Mm. just surrounded by a bunch of like-minded individuals right. that like just wanted more mm -hmm. like i said you know earlier on with the credit stuff i would go to other people and they was like yo what are you talking about right yeah. now being in a space where you saw people who were also impassioned and emboldened by this idea of just becoming more financially literate understanding credit understanding credit repair all these other different things i felt i felt good mm, right yeah. and that kind of like flipped the switch for me i'm like i'm gonna start a credit repair company yeah and then from there Started the credit repair company. I started it in November 2020. I think like two, three days before my birthday or something like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then, you know, started picking the races. Me off to the races. <laughs> and here we are now. That is dope. That is an incredible, uh, incredible story. So yeah. many different, you know, moving parts. I just love that you were just so aware. And right. then I also love the other piece where you found your tribe. Because yeah, yeah. sometimes people feel like they're just like aliens. Like 100%. I was talking to a friend and she's right. just like, sometimes I feel like I'm crazy and like I'm bugging about right, right. things. And I'm like, you just have to find like minded people. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Dope, dope, dope. And so you, you spoke a little bit about um, your dad and mm -hmm. I know you're you come from a Haitian background. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Last name Francois, you right, know, the right. Creole. We're working on it. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, uh, I understand well, but like conversationally, like once we get past, how are you? Then things start getting tricky. Getting tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, actually the same for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had to work my way through it. I've had to like get vibes. It's tough. Painful. It's tough. Yeah. I, I've been kicked out of a lot of barbecues because of my bad Creole, <laughs> but we gonna get there. We gonna yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah. I got friends who want to pull my card. Yeah, it's bad. It's <laughs> bad. Good. Yeah. So, but I know coming up in, in that type of family, because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm from that, um, not going the traditional route or the safe route right. can be a thing. Mm -hmm. Was that ever a challenge for you? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. First of all, and this is another thing, like I actually dropped out of school, mm, okay. right? So it was bad enough that I pursued a career in stand-up mm. at the time, mm -hmm. but then me dropping out of school, it's like, oh, I'm, it's, I'm basically on a suicide mission in a Haitian household. Like you, <laughs> right. you're asking for trouble, right. you understand? Because, mm -hmm. you know, you being from Haitian culture and even a lot of people from different walks of Caribbean life, we know, you got to be one of the big three, doctor, lawyer, engineer. Exactly. Anything, I told you guys. <laughs> anything besides that, I'm putting you in a barrel. I'm sending you back to Port-au-Prince. <laughs> right. One of those kind of things, right? right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was tricky. Um, but, you know, ultimately, 
for me, I just had so much courage. I had the courage of my conviction at the time when I was trying to do stand up to mm -hmm. understand that, you know, I had a vision for myself and, mm -hmm. you know, I really just had to trust in myself and my work ethic. Right. And my ability, my talent, my ability, you know, to just go out there and do the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I we, we had we, me and my parents butted some heads. Okay. We, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we roughed some things out, but ultimately right. we here. So and it really just made me tougher at the okay. end of the day. It really just made me, you know, because in my mind, I'm like, Yo, if I could if I could deal with you know, Haitian parents trying to throw a sap at, at my tech because I <laughs> right. want to leave school. I could do with anything. Right. So, you know, it all worked out for the best. Yeah, right, yeah. right. I totally get that. Um, and it's always the things that you go through that sort of make you stronger, make you right. make you who you are, despite how painful it might have been at the time. It's of painful. You, yeah. <laughs> of you going through it. Right. So, um, so I love how mm -hmm. you now marry your comedy mm -hmm. along with your credit. Like, what gave you the idea to do that? Right. So this is where things get interesting. Right. So now let's go back to when I started my credit repair company. Mm -hmm. I started it. And like any other business that you start, mm -hmm. big struggle. Right. Because mm -hmm. you're trying to generate leads. You're trying to generate clientele. You're trying to get this thing off the ground. Remember, I owe people money. Yeah. I got people I got to pay back. You understand? Mm -hmm. I'm getting called like, yo, you start <laughs> fixing credit. Like, hey, figure it out. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to figure out how I can get this thing off the ground. So initially, you know, I'm kind of just doing some um, some flat foot marketing. I'm just messaging people I know, like, yo, can I fix your credit? Can I fix your credit? This and this, that and that. Mm -hmm. Nothing's working. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm pulling teeth to get people to trust me to fix credit. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And remember, at the time, even now, like, you know this, right. just within going back to the Haitian thing and just if we want to talk about, you know, nationality or just ethnicity, mm -hmm. credit and just financial literacy is still a very sore subject. It is. Within our community. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you have this 20-something-year-old that's DMing you talking about, hey, I can fix credit. Even if you got the worst credit in the world, you're, you're a little, you know, you're a little fishy yeah. to it. And embarrassed, you know. That, that's a big thing. Pride is a big thing in the Haitian community. Huge. Like, huge. huge They're about thing. to die to yeah. let their pride die. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So, they, you know. they will break necks before <laughs> they admit, you know, put their pride to the side. So mm -hmm. it was it was very tough in the beginning. So I couldn't, I couldn't get anybody really mm -hmm. to kind of buy into this business that I just started. But, you know, I was already, I, you know, I owe people money. I'm hundred percent in. I'm like, I got to figure this thing out. I can't bounce around anymore. Okay. So, um, one of my close friends at the time, Chuck's out of my guy, Chukubika, my Nigerian brother. Okay. Um, you know, he's been a very great support to me for, for so, so long. And he was kind of the, a huge part of what kind of helped me to take my credit repair company to that next level. And I'm going to get to the comedy thing. No, no, yeah. it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Right. So how it happens is mm -hmm. he's like, yo, why don't you just start making YouTube videos? Like we talk about, he's like, yeah, man, like, yo, you know, you, you have, you already have a YouTube channel. You, mm -hmm. you're, you're comfortable being in front of the camera, like make content based around this credit thing. And, you know, hopefully maybe that can kind of, you know, help to push your stuff. Mm -hmm. So we start the YouTube channel on and, and coming into the space, I'm like, okay, there are a bunch of other people mm -hmm. on social media and on the internet that are making content about credit and all these things. What's the one thing that I can do that I know I can do better than anybody else? Mm. So I knew for me at the time, you know, I could I could do some research on topics here and there yeah. and gather some information and, you know, maybe I could edit the videos a little bit better. But I always knew from day one, like my personality and my mm -hmm. ability to just connect with people through laughter, you know, coming from the comedy background. Right. Was what was ultimately going to take me to the next level. So. I kind of just hit the ground running going that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like I would, I just, even now, even still now within my videos, I always try and find ways, of course, to educate you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I want to entertain you as well. Yeah, you yeah. know, because going back to it, credit is such a sore subject and financial literacy is such a sore subject that whenever people think of credit or just anything financially literate, they think of some boring dude mm -hmm. in a suit in front of a whiteboard <laughs> right. talking about, you know, this, this and that. Right. But if I get you laugh. It's like, all right, let me hear what this dude has to say. Right, right, so right. that was kind of where how I bridged the gap. It, it brings down, um, you know, the pressure. people with their guards. Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And it's like now, if you go in the comments of the vid the videos, people are like, "Yo, he's yo, I, I love this information, but this dude is funny, or he's, yeah. he's charismatic, or he's this, or he's that." So I kind of was able to, like you said, marry comedy mm -hmm. with the credit, and to where it's like I'm not giving you a bunch of fluff. I'm still giving you the information you're looking for, right. but I just make it enjoyable and entertaining. So, yeah, that's that's kind of how I was able to do it. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And um, you, it's good for people to sort of pick this up that you there's sort of like this concept that there are acres of diamonds in your own backyard. Right. Ooh, and so <laughs> I've never heard that before. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. So it's like we're always looking for like out there, like where where is the gold? Where are right. the diamonds out there? But 
you know, you looked within and say, what do I have right. in my house? Right, right? right, like, right. What do I have that I can use to sort of like um, differentiate myself? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so we're all special in a way. We just have to figure out what is that thing right. that we can apply to sort 100%. of like make us different. Right, right, right. That's right. what you did. Thank so. you. I appreciate it. I try. I try. <laughs> that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And so um, what do you know why you're passionate about credit? Woo, what a question. <laughs> why am I passionate about credit? Yeah. I think... It, it really just stems from just not being exposed to this information earlier mm -hmm. and seeing how it's ultimately changed my life. I, yeah, no, that's what it is. Seeing yeah. how it's changed, getting exposed to that information mm -hmm. that ultimately changed my life and now knowing that there's so many other people out there that need this more than I did. Uh -huh. You know, because my at the time when I was, you know, transitioning, my situation, I was, you know, I just, I lived at home. You mm -hmm. know, things weren't that, that bad. Right. But ultimately, I'm like, you know what? Who else? Uh, there are there are tons of people out there that are in way worse situations than I do that have no idea mm -hmm. how credit can change their life. And I think that's kind of where the passion comes from, because I don't know of many people like myself mm -hmm. that are as young as I am, that know much as much about credit as I do, right. that are disseminating that information on a consistent basis through content that's occurring on YouTube and social media and all these different things. Yeah. So and then once I got it to one friend and I saw what it did for them, then mm -hmm. two friends and I saw what it did to them. I was like, man, I got to get this to the masses. Right, right. So I think that's where that passion comes from. Just knowing that like when i say credit changed my life that's yeah, not hyperbole that's dope I, I where i am now i never would have saw this coming or i don't think it would have happened mm -hmm. as fast as it did if i stayed in comedy and everything mm -hmm. else yeah right right yeah. mm -hmm. so i think that's kind of where that passion comes just knowing how a huge of an impact it's had on me and how much even bigger impact it can have on other people that i, I have yet to connect to but i will connect to so, yeah, yeah of yeah. course and i think that's what i've what i've learned from people is that when your passion is really to either help people or right. something that's bigger than yourself, right. that's when it sort of like takes on a mind of its own. A hundred percent. Goes beyond. Right. You know. So I wanted to get into some like credit tips. -ish. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> right? Let's have fun. Um. So you talk about that there are additional credit bureaus other than the ones that we sort of are traditionally know about. Right. And um, there are some strategies that you should be aware of with that. So you want to share? Let's talk about it. Yeah. yeah. So everybody who has an idea or some type of understanding of credit, they, everybody knows about Experian, mm -hmm. TransUnion, and Equifax. Those are like, you know, the big three that we know about. Mm -hmm. Right. But there are actually what are called secondary credit reporting agencies mm -hmm. where you know, when it comes to negative items that are reporting on your credit report, a lot mm -hmm. of times when people send disputes, they send it to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Right. But what they don't know is that, you know, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax are just people that, you know, report the data, mm -hmm. you know, onto your credit report. There are other people or other agencies that they go to to verify this data mm -hmm. so that in the event that you decide to dispute it off, right, they can go to these people and, and as long as the secondary credit report agencies that which we're about to talk about say, no, it, it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Now they can use that as reason to keep it on there, ultimately giving you a headache where you got to send disputes keep over going. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So one thing that you could do if you're somebody that, you know, maybe you don't want to pay a company like mine or any other company out there to fix credit. Okay. One thing you can do to, you know, assist yourself in repairing your own credit. You can look to freeze your credit report with what are called secondary credit reporting agencies. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of them. But the bigger, the the main five are LexisNexis, mm -hmm. SageStream, ARS, Innovis, and CoreLogic, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of like what type of information each one of them have. But what happens is when you go about freezing your credit report with those secondary credit reporting agencies, mm -hmm. it now increases the efficiency of your ability to get negative items that you're disputing off. One that I know for sure, I know CoreLogic, for mm -hmm. example has to do with information connecting to bankruptcies. Okay. So if you're somebody that you have like a bankruptcy showing on your credit report mm -hmm. and, you know, you've been disputing this thing for, because it takes a while to get bankruptcies off for months okay. on end, mm -hmm. one thing that you could use to help improve your chances, this doesn't guarantee anything, but right. it does improve the chances. Okay. You can now get the information from CoreLogic to freeze so that way, when you send the letters to Equifax, Tra Equifax, TransUnion, and um, uh, Experian, mm -hmm. now you increase your chances of getting any of those negative items off. So that's okay. just one little, little, little tip. One little tip. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. I mean, I I feel like I've been sort of exposed to it, but I didn't really get it. The way that you broke it down right. made it just like super clear right. for me to, to understand. Mm -hmm. So. Since you're you're on the younger side of right. life, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, what are some tips that you give to your friends to sort of like uh, build credit? Like if you want, if you're like either getting started or, mm -hmm. you know, you want to raise your score, what are some things that you sort of help them with? 
Okay, so there's a couple of different things that you could do. So let's say I'm talking to somebody, I'm 24. Let's say I'm talking about some, somebody 18, 19, 20, 21. Mm-hmm. They have nothing, mm-hmm. none at all. And they want, they're starting from ground zero. One of the first things that you could do, you can sign up for a program called Self Lender. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of Self Lender. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Self Lender is basically a certificate of deposit that okay. reports to your credit report as an installment loan. Right. Oh, okay. So now what happens is there it's it, you could just go on. It's, I think it's called self.inc. Right. You mm-hmm. type it in. And then from there, they give you four different payment options to where you can uh, basically deposit money into mm-hmm. the certificate of deposit, either over the course of one year or two years. Mm-hmm. And even though you and self know it's a certificate of deposit, it's showing on your credit report as an installment loan that's ultimately helping you to build your positive payment history okay. and also build your length of credit history, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You don't need, they're not going to do a, a hard pull on your credit. They're okay. not going to need to verify or prove anything. It's a, it's almost like a savings account, yeah. basically, okay. right? That's mm-hmm. helping you to build your credit. So that's the easiest way. It's only the cheapest option, which is actually the best option, is only $25 a month. Okay. Now, the reason why that's the best option is because all the higher priced options usually only stay on your credit report for a year. Mm-hmm. But with the $25 option, it'll stay on there for two years, which is what you want because the longer it stays on your credit report, the longer your age of history is mm-hmm. and the stronger your credit is. So that's okay. one account that you can use, right? Okay. Now, while that's building up, Another thing that you can get on there is uh, something called Rent Reporters. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of that. Mm, vaguely, but not not that particular name. Okay, mm-hmm. so Rent Reporters is another one that you can use. Rent Reporters is basically uh, a way that you can also add some uh, length of credit history to your report. Rent Reporters is basically a program where once you sign up with them, mm-hmm. they can now start reporting the rent payments that you make to your credit report. Now, unfortunately, mm-hmm. they don't report to all credit reporting agencies. I believe they only report to TransUnion and Equifax or just TransUnion, one or the other. Okay. But it still counts, especially yeah. if it's just TransUnion because TransUnion is one of the po- more popular credit reporting agencies that like, you know, auto auto lots and, and, and you know, home lenders and things like that pull yeah. from. So they usually will pull from just one. Is that the case? So depends. The most- some, there are some, there are some, depending on where you're going, there are some, depending on what you're applying for, they may pull for, from all three. There are mm-hmm. some that pull from two. There are some that pull from one. So it okay. varies. Mm-hmm. It's not, uni- uh, you know, uniform across all, all ab- across the board. Okay. But rent reporters is great. Another great option too. Now I know once again, we're talking to somebody who's 18, 19, 20. Mm-hmm. They might be hearing this thing. Well, I don't pay rent. I live with my parents. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I, at one point in time did as well. And at the time I still got rent reporters on. They don't oh, really... Okay. They don't verify and they're not going to, you know, verify and check and make sure they, and they, well, they will, but you could just create like a fake email. You understand okay. what I'm saying? And be like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm my landlord. I, I, I don't hear any of this. Right. Yeah. You, you just create a fake email, you understand? And then from there you should be good to go. And then mm-hmm. basically just once a month, they'll just message that email and be like, Hey, um, did, uh, did, uh, David pay rent this month? Yes. All right. We'll come back next month again. Okay. And what's great about it is it backdates your payment history. Mm. So what that means is one tricky thing about credit that I, I, I still kind of struggle with to this day mm-hmm. is length of credit history is pr- is probably one of the more important things about credit that okay. you can't really like have control Fake. over. Right. Because right, it's time. Yeah. But with rent reporters, one thing it helps you with is it actually backdates it. So you can say, hey, I've been paying rent for up to two years now. So mm-hmm. now when rent reporters puts that account on your report, it'll show that you've been making positive payment history going back to 2018, 2019. Oh, wow. That is so good. that's huge. Mm-hmm. So now you got self lender. You got rent reporters, and then from there, now you can start. You have enough on your credit reports where you can start looking for credit cards. Now, okay. t- typically, if you're a beginner, a lot of people will tell you to look into secured cards. Mm-hmm. It's not. There's nothing wrong with a secured card. Okay. I just don't recommend it because the beauty of credit is that credit rewards you for spending money. Mm-hmm. With a secured mm-hmm. card, it's almost like a pseudo debit card because right. you got to put money into it and all these different things. So a good starter card, if you follow both those steps, or even if you just go with self or one or the other, mm-hmm. once you reach that six-month mark with both of those accounts, now you can start looking into getting a your own credit card, right? Okay. So if you're a new, newer person, three credit, two credit cards that I would recommend as great starter cards. Mm-hmm. One is the Apple card, which okay. unfortunately, if you don't have an iPhone, if you're not an Apple product user, you can't get it. But if you do, you're in love. Oh, really? I didn't know that was a requirement. Yeah, no. If you have Android, you're not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stay out of there. Get a, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Go away. We don't. I, we, I, I believe you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go away. We do not need you. No, no I'm playing. But no, if you have a, if you have like an iPhone or a MacBook, or if you just have Apple user, you can get that credit card. That's one of mm. probably the, I think the best starter card because it offers the most rewards out right. of all cards. It's the easiest to get, um, and they're very generous when it comes to limit increases, mm, right? So as okay. you know, with a credit card, after every couple months, you try and get an increase on whatever limit they gave you. 
within my first year of having an Apple credit card, I started out with like a three thousand dollar limit. Now mm. I'm like I'm at like ten thousand, and mm. I never asked for it. They just did it. Oh, okay. So They're like, don't you want more Apple? Yeah, products? don't don't you want my, <laughs> And I know people are salivating over the idea of that, but yeah, no, that's a great that's a great starter card to get. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the next one is the Discover It Cashback card, right? Okay. I'm gonna say that one more time. The Discover It Cashback card. That's also another great credit card that you're more than likely to get approved with. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're a college student, you can apply for the student version of that card, which would increase your chances of making sure you get approved from it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's a great way to kind of just start building out your credit profile. And then you just take it from there. Awesome. That is, that's a lot. That's great information. Come on. <laughs> we, I told you we here. We here. <laughs> Do you do you plan on getting back into comedy in the traditional sense? Of course not. Never. <laughs> really? Ever. No, no, no. I mean, it was uh-huh. it was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really feel like I've kind of just found my footing within this financial space that I'm at. Mm-hmm. If I do do it, it would be more so down the line, but I just don't see it happening. I think that okay. I'm very happy where I'm at. And when I think about the success that I'm able to find in this space, mm-hmm. I'm hard pressed to imagine. I would have been able to do that in comedy. In by as, now. By now. No, it mm-hmm. would have taken so much longer. So mm-hmm. I really like where I'm at. And I just feel like my impact is more heavily felt here. Okay. You know, it's one thing to make somebody laugh, which mm-hmm. is uh, is amazing. Right? Yeah. It's an amazing feeling. But mm-hmm. to be able to empower and educate your community mm-hmm. at the age that I'm at through, you know, credit and all these other different things that I'm trying to dive into right. is second to none. So I, I, think I'm, I think I'm here to stay for at least the near future. I'll be yeah. here for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That that's awesome. One of the things that I like to ask, so I ask my daughter this question every day on when I pick her up. I'm like, what's the best thing that happened today? Mm-hmm. But that's not the question for you. I'm thinking of, along those veins. Like, what's the best lesson that you've learned for everything that you've been through up until this point? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get deep. Trying to get Oprah deep. On. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you went from a podcast to a therapy session. My goodness. All right. What's the the big the biggest or the best thing that I've learned? Um, which probably we, the best, best whichever that, one. Yeah. You know, you know, it's crazy. I probably, you probably, you're asking that question at the right time. Like, I think the best thing I've learned up until this point actually mm-hmm. has transpired within the past two weeks. So I mm-hmm. think the best thing is just, um, the importance of, I'm trying to find the proper way to word this. Yeah. Take your time. <laughs> I'm trying to, okay, <laughs> here we go. I, I'll just say it like this. I mm-hmm. get, I think the importance of having just the right group of people around you Mm. and really not trying to do everything by yourself like i've had my credit repair company and i've been doing everything i've been doing for a year now i feel like i've learned more about myself Mm -hmm. and my business over the course of these last two weeks than i have over the course of past year just for one reason and one reason only i just i started asking more questions and started looking for insight Mm -hmm. and just constructive criticism from a lot of people within you know, neighboring circles of mine within my walk as an entrepreneur, my walk okay. as a Christian, my walk okay. as a man and all these different things. Mm-hmm. Coming into my natural disposition, you know, for all these previous years, I always kind of just was comfortable doing things myself. Mm-hmm. And I was having pretty solid success doing it that way. Right. But just for me having a conversation with you, I had a conversation with a young lady the other day. She's also an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Like we talked for 30 minutes and I left that conversation thinking to myself like, yo, I, I could have made like $10,000 more last year. Mm-hmm. If I had had this conversation and you, you know what I'm talking yeah, about, having help. <laughs> you know, just having, just having help. And then I was yeah. talking to my, I literally this morning, mm-hmm. um, I was talking to my friend, Chuka Beacom, shout out to my guy. Um, and we were just breaking down, like he was helping me break down certain things in my business. I'm like, I didn't think of that. I never would have saw this. Who would have thought this, this, and this, this, this. I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, why have I been robbing myself and my business That's and everything good. I've been doing? Yeah. From trying to just keep, and it wasn't, it didn't come from a place of self and just like, right. oh, nobody can know. That's I, how we're raised. Yeah, just, get I just, it done. just, just get do it, what you gotta just do. do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And I've just, like I said, I've just always kind of had like this lone wolf mentality. But mm-hmm. whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a career that you're building, whatever it is that you're mm-hmm. doing in life, you know, collaboration and just really looking to the people that you have around you that you know you can trust and right. asking them basic questions like, yo, I'm doing this. Do you think I could do this a little bit better? Do you yeah. think maybe this is not as good as it should be and all this other stuff? Because you know, for myself in 2021, I thought I was killing it. Mm-hmm. And then I'm having conversations now over the course of the past weeks. So I was like, oh, I did okay. <laughs> right. I did okay. And just through them showing me little things that you don't see. So I think mm-hmm. that's probably one of the biggest lessons I learned. And I would definitely implore uh, other people to do that because now through me having those conversations, I like that's why I prioritize even coming to meet you today because mm-hmm. I know that there are probably things I have that I can pour into your business yeah. or whatever it is you're doing and mm-hmm. vice versa. So things like this are super duper important. So collaboration yeah, and just, you know, working with others. Yeah, and that's beautiful that you're learning that now because sometimes it's hard to see. You you can think of other people as competition or you right. could be, like we talked about, being embarrassed or not wanting to really share, like, the realness of what you're going through. Right, right. And that's where the greatest 
either blessings or the the, the magic happens because right. you're sharing with other people and they're giving you what they what they've been through. So 100 percent. I totally get that um, collaboration. I think that's an excellent, impactful yep. <laughs> lesson. The to biggest. Learn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was going to let you go, but you said something about being a Christian. Yes. How- <laughs> Let's talk about it. Come on, how, how has that um, uh, shaped your sort of path? How has that shaped the direction that you feel like you have gone through? Has it, have you found like support? Has it given you confidence or like anything that you want to say about how that has played a part? Oh, we about to get biblical now. <laughs> Huge part. Okay. One of my favorite stories in the Bible Mm-hmm. Um, is the story of Joseph. I'm not sure if you're familiar with mm-hmm. it. When I think about the story of Joseph, I think about like, yo, you want to talk about a soldier of Christ. Mm-hmm. I mean, goodness gracious. Think about everything that he went through in mm-hmm. that, you know, um, him being sold off into slavery by his brothers, yes. getting mm-hmm. thrown into prison, you know, because of the whole situation with Potiphar's wife. And not only getting thrown into prison, he was there for two years, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Going through it all. and Almost got killed. Almost got killed. <laughs> And okay. going from that to essentially getting uh, escalated all the way up to being like the second man in command mm-hmm. of all of the land of Egypt. And a reason why I reference that story is because the entire time he's going through all these things, God is watching. Mm-hmm. You understand? God mm-hmm. is, God, God, if anything, God ordained for all those things to happen, not just in vain. Right. Because he had a larger calling and a larger purpose for him. So I Absolutely. think that was one of the greatest stories I could have ever been exposed to, you know, mm-hmm. in my walk with Christ. Because I liken it not just to my walk within entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. but just everything. And that like... Now, I think perspective is everything. Okay. Because how many other people could have withstood what Joseph withstood and then came out on top and never not once complained, never right. not once questioned his plan with God, never not once questioned anything. He kind of just stood the course and kept going mm-hmm. ultimately to where when God got him, where he got him. Mm-hmm. Not many people would have been able to. I know me. Listen, you put me in prison for two years. <laughs> God, I, I love you. but you sideways. Listen, God, I love you, but we got to talk. What is going <laughs> on? You got me, part of his wife lying on me. This and Right. But. Through me learning that story, it really just taught me about the it really taught me about the importance of just faith and perspective. Mm. You know, remaining faithful to God, regardless of whatever it is that's going on around me, no matter and at the end, and also reminding myself that in the bigger picture, it's probably not as bad as you think it is. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like, so now whenever things go awry in my business or things don't work out or I lose money or mm-hmm. this person lies and this and this, like I really just kind of remind myself, like, look, I'm I'm staying by the foot of the throne. Mm-hmm. I know that he has his hand in everything it is that I'm doing. I know that I made him the foundation of whatever it is that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm chilling. Like, I'm good. Just continue to stay the course, continue to trust in him, continue to pray in him, and just keep that glass half full mentality. Yeah. Like I'm hearing all things work together for your good. Yeah, yeah. You understand? <laughs> right. Like, I could sit here and be upset about this money that I lost, or I could mm-hmm. try and find the positive in it. Understand that his plan, he, he's still faithful, he's still working, whatever it is, and keep pushing forward. Yeah. You understand? So I think to really to answer your question even more directly, if not for my relationship with Christ, I probably don't, I'm not, I don't get as far as I am now. Right. You mm-hmm. understand? Because the, a huge part of it comes back to mindset mm-hmm. and me having the perspective I do and having the mindset I do all comes back from, you know, the foundation I've been able to build through being a follower of Christ. So yeah, very, very huge. Very, very huge. Beautiful. You thank said you. that beautifully. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I totally wholeheartedly agree. I was going to add, but I don't want to like, you know, come muck, on now. <laughs> muddy let, up what you said. And let the church say, amen. amen. Come on it now. It is finished. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much thank for you coming, for Marvin. Me. It was such a pleasure to, uh, I appreciate talking it. to you. Where can people, oh, sorry, before you go, I wanted to ask you. No, sorry, I love it. Let's go. Come on. What, is, what does legacy mean to you? Oh, okay. Is this a is this a, a question? I guess you always ask the guests. Yeah, that's what I always ask. So, on, like, <laughs> what does legacy mean to me? It mm. means holding yourself accountable. Mm. You know, understanding that if you're really tr- if you're just doing something and mm. what you're saying, you say that what you're whatever you're trying to do is great. Mm-hmm. Then you understand that it's much larger than yourself. You understand, and if that is really and truly the case, you have to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable every step of the way. Mm. How you talk, how you walk, how you carry yourself how much effort you put into this thing. Mm. Like, you know, for myself, even within my business, there are nights where, you know, we all have nights where we don't want to do this or you get too tired to do that. But, you know, I'm not, when I remember that I'm not doing it for myself, I'm doing it for moms, pops, my family, friends, all these other different things. Mm. And, you know, if God allows, I'm very young. We've far removed from that. But if I decide Mm -hmm. to have children, I'm doing it for them. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I have to make sure I'm con constantly holding myself accountable to make sure I'm doing whatever needs to be done yeah. at the highest level. You know, even here, me me being here on this platform, if there, there's somebody on the other end of the screen right now that's watching this, mm -hmm. like, yo, I want to be like him or I want to do what that guy is doing right. just from the way that I'm carrying myself on here. You mm -hmm. know, I have a responsibility and all of that. So I think that's what legacy means, understanding that it's much larger than yourself mm -hmm. and acting accordingly. And yeah. I, I pray. <laughs> that I've been doing that. And uh, yeah, I think I think that's what it means for me. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's such a beautiful perspective because sometimes people just go straight to finances yeah. and things like that. But it is it is bigger than that. Yeah. You know, we're all leaving a mark and right. we need to be intentional about how we're doing that. Right, right, right. So I love that. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> now, where can people find you? <laughs> yes, there you go. So if you want to find me, you can find me any and everywhere uh, at Marvin Francois. So Instagram, I don't really use it like that anymore, unfortunately. But at Marvin Francois, <laughs> two underscores. YouTube is where I really go, of okay. course. So YouTube at, at Marvin Francois, Twitter at Marvin Francois, Facebook, everywhere. Marvin, if you type my name in Google, you gonna find me. And so that that's pretty much it. But it's everywhere at Marvin Francois. And uh, yeah. All right. Sensational. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, thank, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>